GitHub released Copilot X, which brings even more AI-powered goodness to the tools that you use beyond the code editor. This includes being able to use Copilot for automatically adding tags to your pull requests or AI powered docs that scopes your searches to the actual documentation that you're trying to look up answers for, including some of the demos that they have available like React and MDN. But we're gonna look at the GitHub Copilot CLI, which allows you to build commands using AI. Hey team, I'm Colby Fayok. I make weekly web dev tutorials helping you to solve real problems with the tools of the web. And today we're gonna check out the newly released GitHub Copilot X. The original GitHub Copilot has already broken a lot of ground for what it was able to do by bringing AI into your tools. And it's clearly made a big impact around the world as it's been able to help people and businesses build better and faster. And while it feels like there's a new GPT model every week, this uses GPT-4, which allows us to take advantage of the latest from OpenAI. So we're gonna dig into Copilot for CLI to see how it works bringing these AI tools right into your own environment. Now it's still in a waitlist stage, so make sure you sign up for the waitlist so you can get access as soon as you can. Now, once you do have access and you install the CLI, which we'll get to in a second here, Copilot basically provides three different methods for how you can interact with it, where we have a double question mark, which can be any shell command. We have git question mark, which is going to be git specific commands. And then we have gh question mark, which is going to be only for GitHub CLI commands. Now, again, this is in waitlist stage, so you do have to have access in order to use it, but we can use the package from GitHub Next, which allows us to install the GitHub Copilot CLI using NPM. So I'm going to run that installation globally so that I have it available wherever I want. But then we need to authenticate. So I'm going to paste in the GitHub Copilot CLI auth, which is going to ask us to copy this code and actually log in using the browser, which makes it really easy to get authenticated. And finally, once you are authenticated, GitHub asks us to add these aliases, which just makes it easier for us to use those different tools, such as the double question mark, the git question mark, and the gh question mark. Now, in order to use the gh question mark, you do need to have the GitHub CLI installed, which you can learn more about and find the installation method over at cli.github.com. But now let's take this for a spin where I have this simple directory of videos from the last video I made, where I'm going to go question mark, question mark, list all of the files in this directory, which is a simple one if I can type it out right, but we can see what it's going to actually happen when we use GitHub Copilot here, where we get the command of LS, we can see exactly what's going to happen with LS. And if we run this command, we're going to hit yes, we can see that we get all those listed out. But how about something that might be a little bit more complicated that you might not know how to do directly with the CLI and you might usually have to look up where what if I want to rename all of these files to be solid video instead of just video. So I'm going to say question mark question mark, which again is going to give me a broad command rename all of the files to replace video with solid and I'm going to run that command. It's going to tell me this is the command it's going to run where it's going to loop through using the four. It's going to move those files and use said to replace a video with solid. And the nice thing about this that I like is it even gives the explanation where it talks about the for loop. It shows each of the commands that it's going to run and how it works, which is a great learning opportunity for all these different commands. So I'm going to say run this command and we're going to confirm it. And we're going to see that when I look back in the directory, all of my files are now with solid instead of video. So moving to the code directory, we have some common problems we face as developers, like how about all the racking up node module directories that we have inside of all of our different projects, right? And you know, maybe you don't need to remove those, but maybe you wanna make a little extra space or whatever use case you want. What if you wanna remove those? So I'm gonna run question mark, question mark, and I'm gonna say recursively, cursively, remove all node modules directories. And it's going to ask Copilot, it's going to come up with this command of running find to look for all those node module directories using type D. And it's going to actually run that RM minus RF uh, command to remove that directory. And again, it's going to show us exactly what each of those steps means. I can run this command, I can hit Y for execute, and it's going to go through and clear out all those directories for me. Now moving into an actual code directory, what if we start looking at what Git can do? So I'm going to say git question mark, and I'm going to say change the message of the last commit, because I never remember how to do that. So it's going to ask, and it looks like I just need to run commit amend. So let's try to run this command and see what it looks like, where I can now update that to something a little bit more descriptive, removing unused const because it's unneeded. That's probably not any more descriptive, but you can see the point of what we can do in order to make these changes. Or what if I want to see the very first commit to my repository? So I'm going to say git, what was the first commit to this repository? And it's going to run, it's going to find this command of git 
log reverse one line, I believe. And it's going to show me exactly, yep, it's going to print in one line. Let's run this command. And we can see that it's giving me the reverse order. So it looks like that very first command was using create next app, I init. And you know, this isn't the prettiest Git history when it comes to the beginning of it, but it was cool that I was able to see what that very first commit was. Now, finally, moving on to the GitHub CLI, what if I want to see all the open pull requests? So I'm going to say GH question mark, what are the open pull requests for this repository? And it's going to run that command. Let's see, ghpr list, which is pretty easy to remember in the first place. I'm going to run that command. And we can see that it's going to request and see that I currently have a sandpack pull request open. And that's just something that I've been playing with inside of my documentation, but we were able to easily see what that looks like. How about if I want to see all the closed pull requests? I'm going to say gh question uh, mark. What are all of the closed pull requests for this repository? It's going to give me a similar command, but I can have a now a flag of state. I'm going to run this command. We can see all the different numbers. And one thing I want to do, what if I want to check out the code of that specific pull request, especially if it's one from somebody else who's a different contributor, such as James Quick here, I'm going to say, I want to check out from number 156. So I'm going to say GH question mark, check out pull request number 156. And we see GHPR checkout, which is going to check out a specific branch, but it doesn't look like it's actually passing that in. So let's run revise the query. And I'm going to say, I want to check out pull request number 156. And once that gives it again, it actually adds that to the query or the command rather, where now let's run this command, we could hit yes. And we can see that it's going to go through and I now have that pull request checked out locally. And finally, as one last test, what if I want to create a new issue for this repository? So I'm going to say GH question mark, create a new issue with a title of super important bug. And let's call a description with a description of this is causing huge issues for my app test just to make sure people know it's a test. But we can see it's going to ask it. It's going to give me the actual title and the body in that create command. And let's actually run this query and see what happens. Where I'm going to run it, I'm going to confirm it. We can even see that the issue was created with that link that I'm going to open up. And it looks like it indeed created this super important bug. I'm going to, of course, close this as it is no longer an actual issue. It was simply a test for this uh, CLI, but we can see that it was able to easily create that right from the command line, where now I honestly know that I can use the GH issue create in order to do that in the future, which just makes it easier for my workflow. Now, just like any other AI tool, it's not going to be absolutely perfect for every single question where we've seen some of the funny answers of ChatGPT or some of the clueless answers from Google Bard, but we can see what this looks like when we're able to use it and use tools like the query revision so that we can clarify our questions. Tools like this are clearly taking over the world, and I fully embrace our new AI overlords, where this isn't going to replace all of our jobs, of course, some of those mundane tasks, but this is really going to empower developers to build more, better, awesome, faster things in order to ultimately serve and build better experiences for the people of the world. Have you checked out any of the new features from Copilot X? Let me know in the comments what your favorite one is or what you're most looking forward to. If you want to learn more about some of the new awesome developer tools available, check out my video where I show you how to use a visual IDE to build React apps. Or if you want a powerful search API in order to power those apps, check out my video where I walk you through using Zada in Next.js to build a powerful search API with aggregations. Make sure you like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.